Okay. Um, now, this is a PHP conference, right? I have a PHP meetup, right? How can you see a Force Asia uh, logo over here? So I first presented this talk two years ago at Force Asia. It is the biggest kind of uh, free and open source software uh, conference uh, in Asia every year in March. They have about 18 tracks, so like IoT, hardware, software, uh, database, you have it. So you, I first spoke about this on 19 of March 2016. Uh, incidentally, this was where I first met Hui Ren. Okay, um, he's now serving NS, so he was also a speaker. So that means the time two years ago, he was also a student, like each and some of you lah. Okay, some of you. Uh, so don't be afraid. Um, I was the first speaker, and actually he was a second speaker after me. So he helped me tweet my talk as well. So a bit about myself. My name is Zion. Uh, I'm currently a freelance web developer, still a freelance web developer, uh, doing PHP mainly, sometimes I touch Java, and uh, right now my client uh, do want to outsource to people, right? So I'm helping them with Android and iOS as well. So a little background about myself. My life uh, is laid out in that map. Uh, you can't really see very clearly here. It's like a timeline of my life in the tech world. So I started programming at the age of set two. So that's 14 years old, started with QBasic, and then pick up C and uh, set three and blah, blah, blah. You can actually visit this website and find out more. Um, so what happened in May 2014? So I was previously working in an events company. Uh, we do the World Gourmet Summit, it's a food event. Uh. So uh, in May 2014, there was a retrenchment exercise. So every department uh, will had to retrench at least 1%. So I was from the IT department. Um, my IT department only got three people. The IT manager, who is the boss son, I was the lead developer, and there was a junior Filipino programmer. So use your brain and think like very simple is definitely me. Lah. Okay, uh, so uh, I decided uh, after I got retrenched at my age, right, um, I want to try freelancing, or else I'll be too old to try already. I'll try everything once, right? Uh, in case you're wondering why there's a picture of Garfield here, right, it's because I'm the same age as uh, Garfield. Okay. So uh, Inzo.com, that is the name of my company. Uh, I own this domain personally, la, use it for my own websites uh, since 2003. So I thought, I create a company, I register a company using the same name. So I did a proper registration. Now, with a proper company, I can issue proper invoices to my clients. Then they can do their own PIC claim, uh, they can file the taxes, they can file proper accounts. I can also assure them that I not fly by night. Say, hey, I take out a project now, right? Then after that, tomorrow you won't see me anymore after I take your money. So I have a proper registered company. So it's a sole proprietorship. That means one man show. Okay? Uh, Two days ago, uh, an IT lecturer actually emailed me, not, not here one, uh, another one, asked me whether I want interns. I said, sorry, uh, no, because actually I'm a one-man show. Okay? I don't need interns. Um, so first thing, go ACRA, A-C-R-A. So this is uh, the Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority of Singapore. $65 of registration. Uh, every year is around the same. Lah. So it's very, very cheap to... Uh, to actually start up register a company in Singapore. A sole proprietorship is the simplest, the least paperwork, when, especially when you file taxes. But sole proprietorship means the company is you, you are the company. If people sue you, they can sue you under your house or you are personally bankrupt. Whereas if you register a private limited, uh, if you say, I invest $1, so people can, at most can only sue you for $1. Okay? That's the difference. But paperwork is much more. Lah. After that, I'm a web developer, right? I don't need an office. I don't want to rent 10-20k per month. So I work from home. So but everything was do it properly, right? So I went to HDP. $20 for home office scheme, five years. Next one, bank account. So I want to keep my bank account separate. I don't want the money from the clients to actually come into my personal bank account and then go out. It makes the accounting a bit messy. So uh, at first I went to DBS. Uh, don't go here. Um, Entrepreneurs account for startup. For the first six months, your minimum balance of $10,000 is waived. After that, wow, there's a four below fee of $35. So basically, after you put 10K inside, right, it's frozen. You can't really touch it. Uh, you try to fall below, right, you are charged $35. Uh, right now, I'm with uh, Maybank. So Maybank has no minimum balance 
uh, uh, issue and they even give you interest. Uh, DBS doesn't give you interest uh, for the corporate account. So, um, and every year when I file my income tax with IRAS, right, just a simple two liner how much is your revenue and how much are your expenses? That's it. This is only for sole proprietorship. If you go private limited, you must go auditor, get auditor accounts, get a, a, a 20 page document, and then submit to IRAS. It's very complicated. A lot of paperwork, so I do one. So, so proprietorship is easier for me in this case. Uh, CPF. Uh, I don't need to contribute CPF myself, but what happens is uh, because I self employed, just like tutors and taxi drivers and hawkers. So, uh, every year after I file my income tax, they will actually say, okay, based on income tax, uh, tax please uh, put this amount of MediSafe into your own MediSafe. Okay? So, that's one of the requirements. So the government wants to protect uh, every of its citizen. Uh, I'm Singaporean, by the way. Uh, next thing, I had no laptop. I only had a desktop at home. So my first uh, laptop, uh, I need a beam laptop to see clients, right? So actually, I went to buy a Surface Pro 3 and a uh, MiFi modem. A modem basically is you put in a SIM card, you go anywhere, you get an uh, internet connection. And of course, name cards. $40 for 200 double-sided cards. Uh, on one side is my details, so you see my registration number there. And on the back side is actually the certifications, which nobody ever looks at. Okay, how about projects? Um, so after I became a freelancer, I have to actively, I have to always remind myself, when I see my relative, I see my friend, I see a stranger on the street, right? I see the chicken rice seller, right? I say, I must give out my name card. Last time, no need, right? Last time, just buy chicken rice and go, right? But now I say, hey, I'm doing freelancing now, though. Let's support me. Oh, that's no projects, right? So, um, I also tried freelancer.com. Don't go there. Uh, I tried upward.com also. Don't go there. Uh, I'll explain why later. Uh, so, it's basically by word of mouth. Um, and no flyers. You know, I'm very irritated. Every time I open the letterbox, I see a lot of flyers. I always throw them away. I don't know about you. Probably you like to use them. Uh. But when I see flyers, I'll just throw them away. So I tell myself I don't want to irritate other people. So no flyers for me. So uh, word of mouth. Anyway, I'm a one-man show. So there's only so many projects I can take on. The most I took on was uh, three projects concurrently. That's, that's my match today. No more. Okay. Um, projects. I started off with fixed project fees. Um, like probably at like $500, $800, $1K, $2K, $3K, later on I went by per hour. Uh, salary, no salary. I didn't draw any money until I met the minimum balance in the DBS corporate account, which is 10 k So every time I got a project, I'll basically stuff it in the corporate account and then that's it. I can't even use that money for myself or else I'll get a fall below fee. So basically I was living off my savings. And afterwards, uh, I drew uh, about 90, 95% of the net profit for each project, which is still taxable. Okay, so proprietorship is you, you are the sole proprietorship. If I earn $100, I take $80, I pay myself, that is still taxable. I cannot say that, oh, I pay my employee salary, so that one can be deducted as business expense. No such thing. Okay, so basically, if I take $80, to pay myself, I still have to declare it and it's still taxable. Now, something interesting happened in December 2014, which is about six months later. Uh, my ex manager asked me out for coffee. He said, uh, You know the, the junior Filipino programmer that uh, we retain, right? Uh, after retrenching you, right? He's, he got a job in the US, so he's going off with it. So, can you come back and help part time? So, actually, I went back and helped part time for six months. Uh, while the other guy actually went back to US today. So nothing against him, la, which is fine. Uh, yeah, so but this was a good source of income for me as well. Freelancing is still not kind of stable income unless you've got good clients. La. Training. Now, we, I always feel that we must be responsible for our own skill upgrading. We cannot depend on the lecturer, we cannot depend on the company uh, to send us for courses, no such thing. So for me, I started attending meetups. Um, so you can go meetup.com, uh, you can find about Singapore PHP user group, Singapore JS, Singapore CSS, uh, which are all actually collated on webeard.sg. 
Rebuild.sg is a website that actually collates all the local tech events in Singapore, your conferences, the meetups. Uh, if you want to organize a meetup and you don't know what's the best day of the month, right? you can go and look at the calendar, they'll tell you. And of course, engineers.sg, it's a non-profit, uh, totally volunteer based. They actually go around Singapore every night, uh, like Michael over here. Uh, we want, instead of spending time with our families, we go and record the local tech meetups. And uh, if you miss it, okay, you can actually go out to engineers.ig to uh, catch up on those videos. Now, uh, wait, uh, now, tech meetups are free. I had a client who was working in the bank. He told me that version of meetups is you pay a lot of money, then you go to a very atas place, and then you have a very expensive dinner, and you give out name cards, and you help each other earn commission. But over here, I tell him, tech meetups are free. The admission is free. You don't need to pay any money to come here, right? The venue is free. That's why I had to give a guest talk in the afternoon. And the uh, Ochanki is also free. At least for us, lah, okay? So it's a close-knit community. Like, um, you always see the same person, people around. It's always the same people wearing the blue t-shirts. You always see the same person recording video. So actually, uh, you know, sometimes freelancing is quite lonely, right? It's over here, actually, you get the support from one another and you learn more. I can, how many articles can I read on the internet? Not many. But uh, if I go to a meetup, I listen to someone who has tried React Native uh, or tried this uh, PHP framework. So I learn more in uh, half an hour rather than I read many articles. Later on, I attended workshops and conferences. PHP conference was uh, the first conference I attended, second conference I attended. iOS conference, Singapore, and DevFest. The third one is very interesting because that's where I got to know your lecturer, uh, Mr. Martin Leon. We attended the same workshop on uh, Node.js Sumo Board. So we did this uh, Sumo Board and then uh, like compete against the other Sumo Boards. Uh, so I started give talks also. So you, after receiving so much, I wanted to contribute back. So and one way to learn, the best way to learn is actually to teach, to share. So I started off uh, at sharing NUS hackers, um, later on at PHP uh, user group. And my first conference talk was at Force Asia. That was a 20 minute talk. Uh, not many people because it's a small room, but still a conference talk. And of course, try out new things. Always, uh, it's very boring, like doing the same things in, uh, day in, day out. So passion will die, but passion for learning will keep the flame alive. So I tried out all these things. Uh, Swift, uh, just touch the surface. Uh. Arduino and Node.js, I tried it out with a lecturer during the Deaf Asia 2015. A bit of Ruby, a bit of Rears, a bit of AWS, and a bit of uh, Heroku. Now, during one of the meetups, I met my JC classmate, which I had not met for 20 years. So you know how old I am. Uh. Um, he, his friend introduced me to momocentral.com. Say, don't go freelancer.com, don't go upward.com, go momocentral.com. So actually, this is a local startup, started by two friends from NUS. Now the thing is they emphasize on quality and personal development. What do I mean? When I go to freelancer.com, when I sign up as a freelancer, they don't check my credentials. The clients will always pick the lowest bid for the project. Uh, uh, can you do me something like Facebook for $50? Uh, I want something like Facebook.com for $50. This sort of request, this sort of project on freelancer.com. And after that, everything is between you and the client. Momo Central different. When I first signed up as a freelancer, on the spot, I had to do an online coding test using a proprietary programming language that they designed for the purpose of the test. So it doesn't matter if I know 100 languages, I had to learn the syntax and the behavior on the spot. Uh, three questions took me two hours to do. Later on, they had a video interview with me. Uh, they asked me to explain my solution. And they say, mm, what if I want to make these changes? Uh, can you do that right now? So it basically to show that you were the one who submitted the question. And when I was confirmed, they asked me, is there anything you want to learn, gain more experience in? Mm, yeah, I say, uh, iOS development. They actually took the trouble to look out for clients willing to take newbie develop, iOS developers. So, and they actually uh, look after the welfare of the freelance developers. So most of the time, uh, you actually last with the client but they are there, they help you watch over. So let's say you want to complain about the client. Uh, hey, his expectation are uh, not very realistic. Leh. 
Uh, he's asking for a timeline, uh, can you help me settle with him? And the payment, administration, everything, all the legal documents, um, like non-disclosure agreement, everything, right? They will help you settle. You can focus on your coding. Or they also have, a, it's a platform for freelance developers and freelance designers. So if I'm good at Photoshop, all those things you can try as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, now, lessons learned. Uh, they, I was, as a freelancer, I see different types of clients, projects, and pricing. Sometimes you say, you want to use uh, Zen framework, uh, okay, I charge you one price. You want to use uh, Drupal or Symfony framework, uh, uh, I charge you another price. You want to use WordPress, I charge you another price. Later on, I went to number of pages. You want five pages, I charge you this price. You want 100 pages, I ask you to go home. Uh, later on, I charge by per hour, which is actually what Momo Central does. They say fixed project fees is nonsense. Supposing I think that your project will take me three months and I charge you 8K. Let's say the project drag to eight months and I still get 8K, both sides, Lugi. So just charge per, per hour. Lah. So Momo Central actually will, let's say I say I want to charge $25 per hour. Momo Central will add another 20% on top. So they tell the client, okay, this developer, you will pay $35 per hour, okay? the client knows of the commission as well. So they will keep track of the number of hours and probably collect the payment every two weeks. So touch wood, right? If the client run away, right? Momo Central will still have the money to actually pay the freelancers. Now, working style. Uh, if I stay at home, right? I try not to, right? Because I stay at home, I step, start playing game or watch YouTube or I just start sleeping also. So sometimes I actually go downstairs to the, my coffee shop to work, sit down like, uh, or actually I go to the library. So recently, no, not recently, uh, last year I went to Tampines Hub, I was there the whole day. Um, 9 a.m., I reached there, library not open, I go to the open space, I work. Uh, 10.30, hungry, I go downstairs to the coffee shop, I eat the uh, quiz up. Then finish it, I go to the library, I work under 12, I go downstairs for salad, go up again, one day 4 p.m., then go to Starbucks. Starbucks, then drink coffee, uh, continue working. Then after that, uh, meet my wife at 6 p.m. for dinner, all at Tampines Hub. So actually, Tampines Hub, not bad. So um, another thing I realized is no man is an island. Don't isolate yourself. It's very lonely. I have no colleague. So at home, right, when I'm working, right, when I look left and right, right, there's nobody. It's just me in the whole house. So it's very lonely. So don't isolate yourself. So that's why I went, went to meetups. Uh, I have to give back to the community and get support. Now, uh, there will be dry periods without projects, okay? Occupy yourself, enjoy life. Part of the perks of uh, doing freelancing is actually you get to organize your own time. Uh, I see uh, I have my unicycle here, so actually I'm picking up a unicycle in a spare time. Uh, I'm also uh, helping to uh, love to my uh, parents. So life goes on. So uh, you have to learn how to get through yourself through the dry periods. And last but not least, Okay, every time when I give a talk, I show this logo, people ask me, is this an Illuminati or from Da Vinci, right? So I always make it a point that I need to explain. So when I created my startup, I created this logo, okay? On Facebook and Twitter, you won't see my face as a profile pic. You will always see this. Um, my company is called Inkzone. So you see I-N-T-Z-O-N-E. Uh, you will see the basics of Euclidean geometry, maths, lah. Point, line, polygon. You will see prime numbers. Okay, two, there are two shades, half gray, half white. Three, the triangle. Five points of the pentagon and seven colors of the rainbow. So why prime numbers? According to mathematical proofs, uh, proofs by Euclid and Euler, there is an infinite number of prime numbers, the same of which can be said of learning that there is no end. So my personal motto is uh, sample discans which is uh, Latin for always learning. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, no questions. Uh, now pass the time over to uh, Mr. Ken Chua.